needs to be uh, the target. And uh, the language is, is somewhat uh, flexible, uh, which, um, which is understandable. Uh, so there's, there's no language in the accord that the 2 degrees C is guaranteed to avoid uh, dangerous uh, climate change. But there has been uh, a, a, a general sense that the message coming from the scientific community is that 2 degrees centigrade warming is the, is the target. And uh, I, I, I frankly, as someone who studies um, relatively uh, local climate change and the, and the impacts of, of extreme events, uh, was interested to know whether or not we would see uh, changes in extremes uh, that would be potentially meaningful for, for humans and, and for the biosphere within that uh, global warming target. Well, no, um, no, frankly, I didn't expect to see changes that were this large. Uh, we're looking at what has been a very rare event for our common experience. Uh, becoming a, a common event uh, in the relatively near-term future. Noah Diffenbaugh, and thank you for being with us, Assistant Professor of Environmental Earth System Science at Stanford, as we continue on the issue of climate change. One. Well, we turn now to look at the impact of climate change in the Himalaya region in, in Asia, where scientists are warning melting glaciers could have a devastating impact on over a billion people. The Himalayan glaciers have been described as the water towers of Asia, as they provide a key source of water to 10 major Asian river systems spread across Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Bhutan, China, India, Burma, Nepal, and Pakistan. Scientists say the glaciers in the Himalayas are receding faster than anywhere else in the world. By the end of the century, 75 percent of the Himalayas glaciers could be gone. We're joined now by the prominent Indian scientist and glaciologist Syedip Bahasnain. He's the chair of the Glacier and Climate Change Commission established by the state government of Sikkim in India. He spoke last night at the Asia Society in an event called the, Himala the Himalayan Glaciers and Asia's Looming Water Crisis. We only have a few minutes, but can you lay out what this crisis is and what happening in the Himalayas. Thank, thank you very much for having me in the show. Uh, the whole crisis uh, has been uh, mentioned by the earlier that two degrees Celsius uh, is uh, already been exceeded. Uh, if you convert into the watts per meter square, the radiative energy uh, is about 20 percent. So this is a big dilemma for the policy makers that how they are going to stop it, because we have already seen that uh, Copenhagen is already been a failure attempt, because there was no verifiable cut uh, agreement on that. And, uh, and the global, uh, the whole world, I think, have to do something for it. And as far as the Himalayan glacier is concerned, they are uh, melting at a very accelerating rate. And not only in the Tibetan plateau, because you have glaciers, you have a permafrost. Permafrost is melting, and similarly, the glaciers are melting. But they are huge in number, just like the uh, North and South Pole. So it takes a while for them to melt. Uh, so that's why the water is increasing in all the river systems, whether it's the Indus or the Brahmaputra. And, uh, and in the years to come, uh, that is going to decline. Then the that will be a big catastrophe for the entire communities there, which are more than 1.5 to 2 billion people, which are directly dependent on these water resources uh, coming from the Tibetan Plateau and uh, the Great Himalayan Ranges. And how quickly do you uh, uh, do you see this uh, the the receding of the of the glaciers? You know. Uh, they, you know, they are some. Uh, you know, they have a different climatic setting in the Himalayan across the Himalayan arc. So those who are on the eastern side, uh, uh, fed by the monsoonal rain during the summertime, they are receding much faster than on the western side. They are coming during the winter time. So we have a, a, a complex uh, climatic system in the Himalaya, and the response time is different. But across the Himalaya, all glaciers are receding with the different uh, uh, timelines. Talk about the importance of the glaciers. Uh, you mentioned the rivers with the glacier and the permafrost melting. What you see in the next decades? You know, but uh, I see as as uh, as we are not done anything on to stop the greenhouse gases or uh, the regional problem. We have the black carbon, which is also uh, accelerating the melt in the region because this black carbon impact is more on the on the Himalaya. So I see the more and more melt will be there, and then after a certain time, the now the discharge is going up. Then the discharges will 
will go down. And recent studies by the Dutch scientists already uh, come uh, indicated that 151 percent uh, of uh, Himalayan uh, the snow and ice component is there in the Indus River as compared to the rainfall, because rainfall is also decreasing in this region because of the climate, because of the greenhouse gases and the black carbon impact. So overall, we see a decline, and then there will be an issue from where uh, these— uh, because uh, the most important part of the glacier melt is uh, not that how much water they are providing, but is the season, in which season they are providing because they, they give the water to the downstream communities and to the agriculture or ecosystem maintaining uh, uh, in, the, in the lean period, in the summertime. What has to be done now? I think uh, uh, it is a very important issue. The global community has to come together into the next uh, Cancun and then decide about the Cancun cuts. Cancun being the next climate change uh, Yeah, summit. next climate change meeting, and uh, they have to be very serious about it. Simply will not talk uh, that we'll do this, but uh, has to come out with a certain cuts globally and the regionally. Uh, these countries, uh, the South Asian countries, including China, has to uh, cut down on the black carbon emission, which is coming from the uh, diesel and uh, from the biomass burning. So they have to change that uh, cooking stoves and things like that for millions of people to reduce the black carbon emissions and similarly put up the filters on the trucking, which has the huge uh, problem in the Himalaya because of the army of the China, India, and Pakistan, and that somehow have to be reduced, uh, and then we'll see some changes uh, occurring in the crossfire of the South Asia. Well, I want to thank you very much for being with us. Syed Iqbal Hasnain is the Indian scientist who studied the impact of climate change on glaciers, chair of the Glacier and Climate Change Commission established by the Sikkim government in India. That does it for a broadcast. Democracy Now! is produced by Mike Berkshire for the producer, Armate Anjali Kamat, Steve Martinez, Nicole Salazar, Hani Massoud, and Robbie Karen. Mike DeVolpo, Miguel Nagera, our engineers. I'll be speaking in Great Barrington on Friday night at Monument Mountain Regional High School. Uh, and you can go to our website at Democracy Now! for details. Also, special Special thanks to Becca Staley, Julie Crosby, Nick Gellahue, Grand, Samantha Chambly. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Thanks for joining us.